All right, here we go. Salute to Knicks Nation, man. We got a special edition of Knicks Fan TV. I got a great interview today, man. Joining us today, uh, by nighttime, he's a diehard Knicks fan, but by daytime, he's one half of one of the hottest producing groups out there called Take a Day Trip. He's worked with a number of musical acts like Little Nas X, Kid Cudi, Travis Scott, Kanye West, Sheck West, the hit Mo Bamba, as most of you know, and a lot of you Knicks fans want Mo Bamba on the team. So uh, that's actually my, my track as well, man. But um, uh, two t- five-time Grammy nominee with three Billboard number ones, man. This kid is doing the damn thing, and I want to welcome him to Knicks Fan TV. And it is David Burrell. David, how you doing, man? Welcome to Knicks Fan hey, TV, man. bro. I'm good, man. That's a, that's quite an entrance, man. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. You know, blessed to blessed to be here blessed to talk about about these new york knicks uh you know for first time i'm I'm able to do something like this so yeah this is a uh, fun, fun not to talk about music for a second you know? yeah absolutely man well th- we've got to talk about your journey as well but let, let's start <laughs> off let's start off with those knicks man because as you told me you're from vermont so I how am. does a kid from vermont become a, a diehard knicks fan yeah, I mean, it it all starts with my dad, you know. So my mm. my dad grew up in New Haven, Connecticut, so kind of more on the New York side of things. Yeah. Um and you know, he just grew up rooting for the Knicks, rooting for the Yankees. Uh my grandfather tried out for the the New York Giants when uh when it was the baseball team in New oh, York. Oh, no. wow, okay. Uh so, you know, it was it was all New York for for a very long time and then uh I was actually born in Rhode Island. Mm-hmm. And you know, obviously in Rhode Island it's like all Red Sox fans yeah. and Celtics fans and everything like that. Uh, so on, honestly, it wasn't too bad to start because the Yankees were killing it and the Red Sox were, you know, hadn't won a World Series since what? The like curse was still on. At that point. So yeah, I was uh, I, I was feeling it in Providence, Rhode Island. And then, you know, finally, when when we moved uh, to Vermont, uh, since it was so out of the mix of a lot of things, me, me and my dad <laughs> wanted to, you know, stay connected to everything still happening in New York. So uh, we got like partial season tickets and and would drive down once a month, uh, you know, during during the Knicks times when it was like Jamal Crawford and okay. like Zach Randolph and like that whole team. So we'd uh, we'd take, you know, one one weekend out of every single month during the season and we we'd drive down and check out the Knicks. And, you know, that it was actually the biggest reason why I got interested in like, you know, wanting to move to New York and all those wow. kind of things. But, you know, re- really uh, it started with my dad and you know it's uh it's the the tradition that got passed on and i'm i'm long suffering really my whole life i've been well, suffering but, to the family bro you know but, but at yeah. the same time man i enjoy it you know I, I love what it's what it's brought to my life of just you know fandom and community and uh also the path that you know it brought me on of bringing me to new york and uh starting my career in new york and and all those things so that's crazy, man. So that's kind of like the the origin story of take a day trip for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of started with those day trips to MSG, to New York, and and you know that kind of gave you your love for the city. And from there, look, look, look what's happened in your career, man. That's incredible. Yeah, man. I'm uh, very 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 thankful that the the tickets were a little bit cheaper back then when <laughs> yeah <laughs> when we when we weren't as good, you know. You yeah. Know, so. I'm uh I'm happy where we're at now. You know, I know it's uh it's not a uh, not perfect, but at the end of the day, you know, see, seeing from where we came from and being being a Knicks fan from from you know, really starting to go to the games during that era, and, mm. uh, just seeing how much this team has grown and, um, you know, it 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 feel it feels good to be on a little bit of a an incline right now. You know, yeah, well- at that. At the end of the day, you know, be, being a Knicks fan really you know sparked so much of my journey and so much of uh you know what what i'm doing in life right now um that it's uh you know ju- just just fun to see see our team starting to to be above 500 right yeah now, you know? yeah that, that's incredible man you got brunson and randall playing at an all-star level uh you have quickly coming up you know the the bench has been playing well as of late uh grimes trying to find his way in the starting lineup so uh, i think obviously from from a young core standpoint they have some promising pieces there and they seem to still be playing hard for tibbs man what's your, your general what's your thoughts on on tibbs let's, let's start there um it changes you know it, cha- it changes i i think i think overall i like tibbs yeah. i think overall i like tibbs um you know is is he a coach for for a fan base like maybe you know he might not make us happy every single day yeah um you know i uh you know i, I watch your guys shows I, I i agree with you know maybe he doesn't make the greatest adjustments or yeah 
uh, greatest moves in game and things like that. But um, I think I think the way that he teaches lessons and the way that uh, he's been able to develop a lot of the talent on this roster, there's you know, it, it might not be something that's that's talked about all the time, but it, it exists. You know, look look at quickly, look at Grimes. You know, uh, look at Sims. You know, look, look, you know, McBride starting to starting to come on a little yeah. bit, you know. So I think uh, overall, like it's 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 complicated. Not every day <laughs> I love Tibbs, you know, not every day I love Tibbs. But yeah. I think uh, <clears throat> coming from coming from a Knicks fan that used to go to games in like 2008, 2009 with my dad, like we're we're not there anymore. Come a long way. Know? We, we've come a long way. We've come a long way. You yeah. know, it's it, we're, we're still suffering a little bit. But at the end of the day, we. You know, we got Jalen Brunson. Julius Randle's an all-star this year. Jalen Brunson should have been an all-star this year. Uh, you know, Brunson, like a lot of people have been saying, might have been the best free agent signing of this offseason, mm-hmm. which which I agree with. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, we fi- we finally got a point guard, man. That's yeah. the that's the biggest thing, man. We finally got a point guard. So I'm uh I'm I'm happy with where we're at. Uh we're above five hundred. I'm happy with that. Uh we got a team that fights. You know, we we've had a lot of unfortunate luck, uh, a lot of overtime games that that you know yeah. unfortunately led led to losses and things like that. But you know, overall, like I can't complain too much, man. You know, I can't complain too much. Yeah. You know, o- overall, I'm I'm liking where where the season's you know been going in terms of the development of our players and uh, you know how how things are coming along for our team a little bit. You yeah. Know, I think I think luck is starting to to come into our corner a little bit more than mm-hmm. it used to, you know? So I'm, uh, I'm feeling good overall. I'm uh, feeling good overall. Those, those cardiac Nick Knights, man. Uh, I'm a big yeah, Brunson yeah, guy, man. big Brunson fan. Um, I love watching this kid operate in the fourth quarter. It, it's just ridiculous, especially in crunch time when things tighten up. It seems like that's when he plays at his best. And yeah. it, it's, it's just been incredible to watch. Like you said, he's, he's definitely deserving of the all-star team. I think he, he may get in as a, as an injury replacement, but he, he's absolutely deserving of it. It's just unfortunate that, well, it's fortunate for the Knicks that they had two guys playing at an All Star level. But unfortunately, so in twelve roster spots, I think they should they should have been expanded the the rosters a long time ago, at least to fifteen. Um, but yeah, Brunson Brunson's been outstanding. Give me your, your thoughts on Julius, man. You know, he, he his, when he first got here it was kind of a so so year. The team was still in in kind of disarray on the Fizdale and everything like that. And then he has the All Star year first year on the Tibbs. Last year was a bit of a setback, and now this year he seems like he's back, man. What, what, what's your thoughts on Julius? Yeah, man, I'm I'm proud of Julius, man. I'm proud of Julius. You know, I think, uh, I mean, you know, we we all saw it. He he was living in it. You know, la- last year, last season, just uh, you know the struggles that he had. Um, you know, I think some of the struggles you can attribute to just some of those roster moves and those roster lineup uh, moves that Tibbs might have uh, you know put in place. You know, I think. Uh, Alec Burks at the point guard wasn't necessarily the best way to unlock Julius Randle. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I think I think having Brunson on the squad and, and you know, a new Julius, a new attitude in Julius, uh, you know, he's, he's one year after signing a big contract. You know, there's there's definitely something about uh, signing that first like big contract where you get, you know, your first, you know, good chunk of change mm-hmm. that. Uh, I think can really psych players out or just psych people out in general. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not an easy transition. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of the thing where it's like, Oh, like you've been chasing your dreams your whole entire life. And that's kind of like one of the pinnacles, you know, mm-hmm. and the minute that you kind of get over that plateau, you're like, I got to figure out how I move forward now, you know, without, yeah. without that, you know, that biggest thing that's been pushing me to succeed, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but the way that he's rebounded, I mean, you know, he he deserves it, man. He's an all star. You yeah. know, he's uh, he's playing great. Uh, I'm proud of him. I'm proud. I'm proud of how he's you know spun like winning the New York fan base back is not easy. Man. Not so easy I'm, at all. Not I'm, easy I'm proud, at all, man. I'm, yeah, man. I'm I'm proud of him for for maneuvering that and navigating that and figuring yeah. that out. You know, um, obviously, you know, same with Tibbs. Sometimes not not every day. I'm you know. Uh, you know super high up on the julius randall train but mm-hmm. i think as a whole uh especially this season um and how he's bounced back from last season I, i'm proud of him man i'm really proud of him you know so he's, yeah. he's figured it out he's figured out how to get the fan base back 
Um, you know, not not all of us because New York Knicks fans can be stubborn. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. yeah. figuring out how to get the fan base back. Most of us, yeah. you know, and and we're above five hundred, man. We're winning games. You know, he's he's out there scoring thirty points. You know, mm-hmm. twenty five points, twenty seven points. He's you know getting fourteen rebounds. Like he's he's fighting, man. He's playing on defense. He's doing the things that we didn't really see last year and uh, the things that we needed from him. You know, and he's 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 coming along. He's coming along. No, no question about it. And, uh, you know, at the time of this recording, we're a couple of days away from the NBA trade deadline. Is there a move that you want to see this team make? Do you want them to, to stand pat, swing for the fences? What, what do you want to see them do? Um, It's tough, man. It's tough. Like, I I, I really like OG. I, I do really like OG. I think, uh, um, you know, he's a, he's, a, he's a Tibbs kind of player. You know, yeah. I, I think when it comes to Tibbs as a coach, like, you you need Tibbs players or else they're never going to play right you know right um so you know I, I think an OG would be be a good addition to this team in terms of what he brings on defense uh in terms of what you know he can do without the ball in a lineup uh he doesn't need it all the time uh he's still putting up what like 17 points a game mm-hmm. uh can shoot the three pretty well um and you know the, the Knicks need a wing man we're we're out there just got Quentin Grimes who's like <laughs> guarding everybody man yeah man I'm like you know help this like, man you know what what are you gonna do man his arms are only too so so long you know yeah. it's like you can't you can't get up there on those those KDs and those Jason Tatums and things like that so you know we're we're doing we're doing the best with what we got um I think I think OG's a would be a great addition in terms of uh fixing that little you know situation that we have at you know our wing depth mm-hmm um, you know, I think, I think besides that, you know, Malik Beasley, I think is, is a name that I'm interested in just in terms of what he can, uh, provide in terms of scoring off the bench. Um, I think the bench is the biggest thing where I see games start to, you know, slow down a little bit for the Knicks at times, yeah. just when it comes to being able to put points on the board. Um, so, you know, someone like a Malik Beasley being able to fit into that, uh, What's his name? Jared Jared Vanderbilt is Vanderbilt, also the yeah. other uh, the other uh, you know rumor that might be tagged along if that trade were to happen. Mm. Uh, you know that that's someone that uh, you know I, you know looked into him a little bit and someone that I'd I'd also be excited to have on the team if that was you know thrown into the mix with the Malik Beasley. Um, and I think overall, man, like you know Obi Cam, I love him. You know, I love I love the moments that they brought to this team and some of the exciting moments of this season already. Um, but I think as a whole, what's fair to them is, you know, get, give them an opportunity where they actually yeah. are able to build their careers and build their lives as, you know, basketball players in the NBA and uh, continue to let them chase their dreams, man. You know, I, I think, uh, it's, you know, Tibbs is very set on his rosters. Um, and once he's set, he's set. <laughs> and, uh, and and Julius Randle is playing too well for for Obi Toppin to be able to take minutes. So um, I get it, and you know I I I hope I hope they're able to find good homes for them at the same time while you know being able to improve the roster at the same time. So yeah. we'll we'll see what happens. You know we're we're only two days away, um, but I'm keep keeping my fingers crossed for something <laughs> good. Man, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, likewise, man. But I def- <laughs> definitely agree. Definitely agree on that, man. And once again, we're talking to David Burrell, one half of the music production duo Take a Day Trip, and uh, we're chopping it up on these Knicks, man. David, I'm pr- I'm pronouncing your your last name right, right? It's a uh, it's Burrell. It's Burrell. 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 So, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, the, all right. David a, Burrell. The, the A is an E. It may, it makes no sense. Okay. But, you know. Gotcha. Somewhere, somewhere along the way, it made sense. You know? All right, all right, all right. David Burrell, <laughs> David Burrell, no doubt, man. Yeah, so, yeah. so, so, back to your early days of your fandom. Like, who, who was your guy? Who was your guy on the Knicks? Early days of my fandom. Um, I mean, de- de- definitely during the era when I was actually going to games. I think Jamal Crawford was okay. uh, was the guy that I was Buckets. excited about the most. Mm-hmm. You know, just it's he's fun to watch man he's just one of those players that no matter what's happening in the game granted a lot of the Knicks games that I went to most of them they always won oh so wow that's I, good I, that's I, good because there to wasn't be too there. much winning going on in those yeah, days yeah not not during that not during yeah. those seasons man so I think uh 
I, I was fortunate enough to to see some. Maybe they were paired up against bad teams. I don't remember, <laughs> but you know, I was for, fortunate enough to see some wins. I think you know Jamal Crawford and just you know how exciting of a, of a player he was to watch in person. Uh, Nate Robinson was always an exciting player to watch in person. Um, you know, I was in college during the mellow days. That was mm, yeah. You know, I mean, what was it? Twenty twenty twelve is when we went to the playoffs. Yep. Which would have been my sophomore year, so I, re- I remember watching all those games in my dorm room, like in the in the common room, and going downstairs with a bunch of my buddies, and you know, just seeing the Knicks finally be good. You know, uh, I think Carmelo in general has always just been, uh, at least for my generation, you know, like I, I was born in '93, so uh, don't really remember the. the yeah. Oh, the that, was, that was a good year. Yeah. That was a good year for the Knicks. Yeah, d- don't, don't remember that. Don't, I was born that year, man. So, I, you know, I don't really remember that one too well. Uh, 1999, I like vaguely remember. Okay. You know, um, like I, I can't pull any memories out of my cap, but, you know, yeah. somewhere where I'm like, I remember the energy, man. I remember the energy. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I remember, I remember how my dad was feeling, you know? So, like, them, them Latrell Sprewell days and them Allen Houston days, I think, you know, overall, like Latrell Sprewell was definitely when i was below 10 yeah. 10 years old like that that was my guy okay you know, okay that that, that that was like those are like the name i always loved to say yeah uh it was the name i always loved to root for <laughs> um, you know and then fast forward into the carmelo anthony days and actually having a superstar in the garden who you know had some incredible moments and um you know i i wish we could have given given him more at the end of the day yeah you know but for for what i think he brought to to the garden and what he brought to Knicks fans and just uh, being able to see that happen, you know, with someone that was wearing our Jersey um, and, you know, coming to college for the first time, living in New York and, you know, feeling that energy. It was, uh, you know, Car- Carmelo's up there for me, Latrell Sprewell's up there for me. And then, you know, Jamal Crawford and Nate Robinson days, man. Yeah. Those, uh, those, 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 those are fun players to watch in person. So. Those, uh, those, those, are, those are some of my faves in terms of what I actually remember, and, yeah. you know, people that I actually, you know, experienced. You know, I'd love to say Patrick Ewan is 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 my – I remember all the, all the plays of Patrick Ewan, you know. Right. I'm just – I just, you know, was born too late for that. Yeah. No, nah, those are some good days, man. Obviously, you know, we wish we would have won. But uh, Ewan was my guy. Obviously, Starks, Mason. And when we mm-hmm. got into the later 90s, Houston Sprewell, for sure. Marcus Cambio mm-hmm. definitely was a big Marcus Camby fan. Um, Stephon Marbury. I mean, I remember the day we we traded for Stephon Marbury to to a T. I remember yeah, yeah. exactly what I was doing uh, because I, I in remember, that I remember rocking his shoes, man. Yeah, remember, yeah, the Steve, from Stephen Barry's, the Starberries, right? <laughs> yep. And, I remember and, those, man. Yeah, and for me, um, Penny Hardaway was another one of my favorite players. So when I saw that they both came in the package, now I was too young to to understand that that was probably one of the worst deals that the Knicks ever made. But <laughs> I was just excited, number one, to get some reinforcements in here, get some talent, and to see my guy yeah. Penny rocking a Knicks jersey, even though he was you know on his way to being washed at that point. Uh, yeah. I was I was ecstatic. Uh, Melo was my guy. He's he was one of my favorite players of all time. So getting him in that trade was was a great day for me is that was another day that that I remember but like you said I just wish um even though they made the playoffs they did make the playoffs th- for 3 years mm-hmm. I just wish they could could have accomplished more you know it was tough to lose that depth I, I like a Gallinari I did like Chandler I did like Felton yeah. at the time Felton and, and Stat were cooking but um yeah it was just one of those things man I I like I understood Dolan pushing the panic button and getting him in here because obviously we were starving for for star talent, but yeah. um, you know we just didn't have the depth. We had Jared Jeffries running out there like a chicken without a head. You know, yeah. Tony, Tony Douglas. We had Billy Walker trying to dunk on everybody. You know, with no fundamentals, he was just trying to dunk on everybody yeah. every night. You know, Sean Williams chucking up corner threes. It was a it was a hodgepodge group, man. It was a tough yeah, tough group man. to look at, man. It was it was definitely tough, man. You know, but so some, sometimes we had those magical moments in ISO ball with with Melo, yes. man. You know, <laughs> he's right. we'd be like, all right, you know, like yeah, at least we, at Mello, least we got that. Way, man. You know, at, the, at least you know, yeah, it may it may it may buying a ticket to the Knicks game not not too bad, yeah, you know, not too bad. You know, we might not ever win the championship with that team, but you know. Right, it, it, it made some made some moments not too bad. You yeah, one one hundred percent, man. And, and then think, you know, uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Now I was just gonna say, I think uh, you know, as a whole, coming from all those teams, and you know, just 
What Dolan took over the the, the Knicks in the early two thousand. Yeah, right? ninety nine, two thousand, or two thousand, two thousand. You know, I've you know we're from two thousand to twenty twenty three. It's uh, we're we're in a better place, I think, than than we've ever been. You know, we yeah. we actually have pieces that we that we can move around, uh, both in assets and in players. Um, we've developed well. Uh, we've drafted, you know, out of the lottery, and you know found found some gems that mm-hmm. you know look like kids that can have careers in the nba for quite some time um so you know a, as a whole it's i'm 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 dreaming a little bigger now you know yeah. it's uh, I, 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 I see i see a direction we're yeah. going in you know okay. I'm, I'm 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 not mad at it i'm yeah. not mad at it you know no i i hear that man i definitely hear that and uh look you know the the Knicks tape days were good like you said that 2012 playoff run was was unforgettable cuz I went mm-hmm. to, to the to the opening night game against the Heat and just seeing how that team was constructed with Felton being back. And then you had the Vets with Jason Kidd. Uh, mm-hmm. You had Rasheed Wallace. You had Kurt Tom, Marcus Camby, you know, Shumper, JR were doing it. Uh, uh, Novak, you know, chucking threes. And then Chris yeah. Copeland later <laughs> on. That was a good team, man. That was a good team. Yeah, man. man. It that hurt me to lose to the Pacers because I still had that. You know, you, you, you missed the prime Knicks Pacer rivalry. But even with that newer mm-hmm. team, with Paul George and Hibbert and Lance, I, I still I couldn't stand that team either. You yeah. know, yeah. So it was tough. It was tough, man. It was, but we got out of the first round. Yeah, you know, yeah, but we did. it was it was tough. It yeah. was tough. You know, even even when we, when we get out the first round, man, we're we're still Knicks fans, man. We're long suffering, so no question. We, we we're, we're we're just waiting for for you know to see what the promised land looks like eventually. Yeah, no no question, but, man. One of these days. <laughs> one of these days, man. One of these days, man. You well, know? Yeah. One of these days. I'm yeah. praying for it. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. And uh, once again, we're talking to David Burrell, one half of the music production group. Take a day trip. Also die hard. Knicks fan. And a Knicks fan TV fan, man. Like, How'd you find us, bro? No. I, I, I think, <clears throat> I, honestly, I don't remember perfectly, but it probably happened in the way of uh, after a really you know unfortunate Knicks loss where I was just going to going to YouTube and typing in Knicks and just you know see seeing what uh what was being talked about and you know what I, I really wanted to be a part of the fan base a little bit more you know was, mm-hmm. I, I think I've, I've gone like pretty much my whole entire life with uh only being able to talk about the people around me in my mm-hmm. circle um and you know growing up in New England like I, <laughs> I didn't gr- grow up with a lot of people that that yeah. felt like how I did you know so moving to New York I started to accumulate some more people and you know had 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 some diehards close by but uh you know I, I really wanted to connect a little bit more with the fan base and I think it was just one day after Nick's loss I was just going through YouTube just you know trying to trying to find some more stuff and I mm. came across your channel and you know just really ever since like ever, ever since that that first time locking into you guys I've just been always locking into you guys after every game you know, if I if I'm not able to catch it live, I'm I'm catching it later before bed. Um, you know what 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 you guys have been doing is just it's 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 great, man. It's great. Appreciate you, know, it. We, we, you got you got one of the most loyal fan bases in all of all of sports. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and just to have a home where we can all, you know, celebrate the wins and and vent about the losses and uh, get perspective at the same time. You know, I think you 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 Alex and JD offer like so much perspective of just uh you know really about this team of, mm-hmm. of, of, how, of how we can look at this this team constructively but also see that we're also going somewhere mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. or also see when we're not going somewhere yeah you know so that you know I, I think as a whole it's always it's 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 ever ever since i did discover it's been something that i that i haven't been able to to turn off you know nice like you, you got you guys have done a great job man you guys appreciate have done a really great job appreciate yeah, it man. man and yeah that's that's definitely you know, based on you know feedback i've received from people who for are from out of town but the diehards is that yeah they they want that connection they want that community i mean i've even felt that way when i was going to school back in the days you know i went to hampton university at first down in virginia then i went down to georgia state in atlanta and yeah you have knicks fans obviously uh down there but you know when in your day-to-day life when you're going to school you're going to work you're going to school you're going to work you got your homies mm-hmm. down there they're they're not rocking with the knicks you know you don't have that right within you know your, your grasp whereas when you're yeah. home you have your homies at home you could you're out in nyu you're in the city you go to a bar you go watch the game it's always somebody around that you could you know build with and vibe with on the team but when you're out of town yeah. you just don't have that same connection 
Yeah, man. Yeah, it's you know, especially when I moved to LA, man, it was you know, we're we're a long way from New York. Yeah, out here, yeah. You know? They're not even in the same conference out here, you know. So I think uh, uh, I I found like two two other homies that, that okay. are East Coast guys that that are that are big on the Knicks, but. You know, I, I needed more, man. I needed yeah. more, so I'm 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 thankful that you guys uh, started what you started, man, or, or keeping it going the, the way that you're keeping it going. You know, it's it's uh it's after a lot of lot of you know losses like the Clippers won on Saturday, things yeah. like that. You know, I got I gotta check in. I gotta 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 see how people are venting the moment. You Absolutely. Know? Sometimes sometimes you gotta vent too, but. You know, after a Philly after a Philly win went on Sunday, man. At the same time, you got to go in and and see how excited we are. So, yeah, and that that was know, that it, was a big one, man. Yeah, yeah. So it's a uh, it 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 keeps the energy that I'm feeling personally. You know, mm-hmm. it, I'm able to plug into your show and and see just how the community's feeling, and you know, able to able to to feel a part of something. You know, yeah. Which uh, which which is you know that. You know, it's, that's magic at the end of the day. That's you know? dope, man. You know, you know, I don't know if you if you ever connected with him, but um, my guy Elite from from Dreamville, he's out in L.A. Diehard nah. Knicks fan. <laughs> Yeah, e- elite. Yeah, man. please, please connect me, man. I'm, yeah, I'm, try, I'm trying to meet Knicks fans all the time. Man. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I gotta I connect it. you and elite, man. He was he was on the show, diehard Knicks fan. He's based in L.A. as well. Yeah, man, please, please, I, I, you know, it's, it's slim pickings out here a little bit. So. Yeah, and anyone you know, please. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> man. And and uh, we we've been talking about um potentially coming out there. I know they they play the Lakers and Clippers in a weekend mm-hmm. in March, so. Um, I may try to come out there and and do a do another meetup or something, man. So if we do, definitely, yeah. uh, would definitely love to have you connect with us for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Let me know, man. I'm 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 I've circled those two games in my calendar. So yeah, I was, uh, I'm most likely gonna be there as long as I as long as I'm in town. Yeah, I'm gonna be there. Okay. So. All right, yeah. sound, sounds good, man. Once again, we're talking to David Burrell, one half of the music production duo Take a Day Trip. And um, David, on, on that name, man, how, how, how did you come up with that name? Um, yeah, man, I, I'll, it's it's a long story, but I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll try I'll try to do it the you know the the way that it make that it makes sense to deliver, you mm-hmm. know. So, uh, my my other partner Denzel, uh, we we both met at NYU. Um, and we, we went to a program there called the Clive Davis Institute of Recorded Music. So, mm-hmm. uh, we were both there for music, mm-hmm. uh, you know, learning how to engineer, learning how to produce, learning how to write, uh, learning the business side of things, everything like that. And, uh, I wanted to say, uh, yeah, it was, it was spring break, spring break, our sophomore year. Uh, and a little bit before that we had been, uh, showing up to Epic Records uh right in midtown manhattan just uh linking with uh with our now manager john john tanners who mm. uh at the time was only really an acquaintance that happened to go to summer camp with a kid that i went to school with who was like five years older than me like when when i was in vermont i went to a school that had like 16 kids a grade in it so mm. it was easy to know the seniors if you're in eighth grade you know what i mean um and one of the seniors, this guy, Alex Hollander, happened to go to summer camp with this guy, John Tanner's, uh, you know, back in like third grade and fast forward all these years later, you know, he had been writing for Pigeons and Planes and, uh, you know, the new kid on the block that had just gotten this A&R job at Epic Records. And, um, you know, we we had been meeting with him every single week and it kind of turned into like a little bit of a mentorship where uh, he was giving us advice and opinions on everything. And, uh, you know, we, we were both pretty young at producing music at that time so uh we we really needed all the advice that we can get you know and it, it really motivated us and pushed us to have a it was like a homework assignment every week you know uh to just continue the craft and keep you know active with the craft and um spring break was coming up and and me and denzel really wanted to go down to miami because that's where ultra music festival was mm-hmm. happening you know like electronic dance music was really big and this was like 2012 uh, so electronic yeah. dance music's really big at the time. Uh, Winter music conference is happening, um, and turns out, you know, John also happens to be going at the same time. Uh, and when we all end up down in Miami, um, almost immediately, man, like being in a new spot, like we just wanted to be a part of music and everything that was happening there, even if mm-hmm. we weren't ending up in the rooms that we wanted to be in and everything like that. It was just about us going down there and just building and just you know, being a part of the feeling of, of music happening in a certain place, you know? Um, and you know, the three of us really just started, you know, 
John started kicking it with us as like homies and like we were just running around all of Miami and ended up finding ourselves in all different situations and working at studios like Circle House and, you know, these dream studios that we have been, you know, just only been able to look at through like, you know, Tumblr, like Google image searches and things like that. And, uh, you know, somehow found our ways in, in all these situations. And uh, once we came back from the trip after making all this music, we kind of, we sat down and we kind of asked ourselves like, you know, that experience that we had in Miami um, feels like something that, that we should continue, you mm. know, like the, there feels like something there that we all are on the same page of, of what we want in life and what we want from music. Um, and we started to talk even deeper into that of just like the experience of Miami and how we realized the music that we were making down there was just so much different than the music that we we're making in New York. Mm. Uh, and from there started having a conversation about how we really just wanted to see the world through music, you know? Um, and at the end of the day that, that became our biggest goal and still is our biggest goal. And, mm. uh, you know, we, had, we ended up landing on, on day trip and then eventually, you know, switched to take a day trip for, for copyright issues and all, all that <laughs> kind of stuff. But, yeah. uh, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy that happened cause I love our name, you know, but it, it became an, it became a reminder to us to, uh, you know, every single time that we say our name, every time we look at our name, like, that's the reminder to us that always says like, you know, at the end of this all, like at the end of the day, mm. the biggest reason why you're here is because you want to see the world through music, mm. you know, like, like that, that is the biggest goal is to be able to travel, to see things, to like open up yourself to, to a big world, mm. open yourself up to, to other cultures, not, you know, not just, you know, what's happening on the ground there, but like really see how people are making their music there, really see how people mm. uh, engrave their music in their culture. Um, and you know that 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 became our biggest thing and that that's the reason why uh we stuck with a name like that pretty much just to to always remind uh, remind ourselves that you know it, it's bigger than success and all these things at the end of the day we just want to want to see the world you know so that, that 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 that's how we landed on it yeah that's how we landed on it that, that that's incredible man is there a favorite place that you've been to so far where you know you really admire the culture or, or you you kind of uh, took some of the those cultural influences and incorporated that into your music. Yeah, man, we uh, it's a couple places, man. We we're just in uh, uh, Tokyo in December mm. uh, with with Lil Nas X out there, and it was like it was like eleven of us. It was like me, mm. Denzel, my partner, a bunch of other producers. Uh, you know, our photo guy David, um, and it, you know, we just went out there and had it had a had a blast, man. You mm. know, just. Uh, you know, experiencing someplace that I think, you know, for a lot of people in the United States, that's kind of like one of our, you know, little dots on a map yeah, that we're yeah. saying like, oh, one day this is a bucket list place I'll go to. And, you know, it lived up to it, man. It lived up to it. Uh, that was definitely uh, one of the, one of the best places I've ever been, especially to create music in, mm. you know, um, we, we did a trip down to, to Medellin in Colombia along uh, like in 2018, 2017 that, mm -hmm. uh, was was definitely a pretty monumental trip. Uh, we, we met this artist named Fade, who is really starting to to have a great moment right now in the in you know, in uh in in the Latin world of music and, um, you know, develop friendships and relationships with people down there that, uh, have have stuck with us for for all this time. We're we're actually working with them tomorrow. You know, um, so that 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 was an incredible trip. Um. Uh, we spent months, like many, many months. We maybe spent like a year in, you know, separate occasions yeah. in London. Okay. Uh, you know, did did a little mini tour through the UK at one point when uh when we were you know doing DJing and all that kind of nice. stuff, and uh you know got got to see the countryside of the UK and all that kind of stuff. But you know, music as a whole in that country and especially in London and just. Uh, you know, we're we're really starting to see the moment now of like Afrobeats and you know a lot yeah. of Caribbean music really making its way into the United States on a bigger scale. Uh, but when we were in London, it was starting to to bubble a little bit. So it was a really exciting time just to start to see the scene really starting to come to life even more in in London and the UK, and at the same time making its way across the pond to New York. You know, so um, yeah, man. I mean, we we've been to a lot of really awesome places and, and made music in a lot of really awesome places. And, um, I'd say those three are, are, you know, really top of my list of, yeah. uh, places that opened my eyes to, to new scenes and, you know, different things that were happening in different places. And, uh, in return, you know, 
gave us inspiration that I think inspired different kind of music that we were mm -hmm. making in those places. And as a whole, we've been able to, you know, take those experiences and, you know, continue to, to make music with those, you know, experiences that we've, that we've lived in, 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 you know, in our time with all those, all that inspiration, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I'd say those, those three places are three places yeah. that, uh, that I'm, that, you know, really, really have meant a lot to us and, in, in our experience as producers. You That's know? dope. That's dope, man. And, and you mentioned London. I got a lot of family in London, London, a lot of cousins. And when I used to go out there, my, my late teens, like around, like, say, like 18, 20, you used to hear the garage music and yeah, all the house man. music, obviously. And then later on, drill. Yeah, and as you said, you you hearing that more and more and more over here. So back then when I was going over there, I'm like, man, what are you guys listening to? Blah, blah, blah. And now, now it's, this is mainstream. It, it's yeah. mainstream, man. So, yeah, I yeah. always love going out there, man. Yeah, yeah, we 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 had an opportunity to make a, a garage record out there too. That uh, mm. with uh this uh Fred Fred again, the producer Fred again, mm -hmm. um, and uh, with AJ Tracy and uh, Mabel, and uh, it, it did pretty well over there. So that that was definitely like a, a a moment where I was like, oh wow, like we really came into this place and spent so many months here, just like getting to know people, uh, getting to know the music, going out, mm. seeing how the music is played to you know, or played seeing how people dance to the music like see, really like trying to soak up as much stuff as possible and uh literally our our last trip there before the pandemic hit we ended up producing this record and uh you know i went top five on, on their charts in the uk and uh you know be, being able to 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 you know confidently say that we that we you know created music with with people in a place that uh, in a genre that is so, you know, defined by yeah. that place, you know, it was, it was definitely a, it's like one of my proudest songs That's out of dope. all the songs that we made, you know, That's so dope. love London, man. Yeah. I love London, yeah. Likewise. Man. It's a good place. Man. Likewise. Good place. Like, likewise, man. Uh, who, who are some of your, your, your musical inspirations or heroes? I got a lot of them, man. Yeah. I got a lot of them. I think, uh, uh, justice you know mm -hmm. uh or justice uh mm -hmm. was the, the the french uh electronic uh you know production and dj duo um that have have always been uh big influences to us uh i think in terms of how they carry themselves you know how i mean their music speaks for themselves you know um that you know for for me and denzel the, those guys especially as a duo um are two producers that we've that we've always looked at and always been excited about um you know nirvana was a really big influence um you know i think i think with someone like kurt uh and you know that that band in general man like you know kurt would be singing like major major keys over mm -hmm. like minor chord progressions and all this kind of stuff like mm -hmm. uh there's a sense of freedom in that music that i think has always been very inspiring to to myself and denzel mm -hmm. um you know timbaland and pharrell mm -hmm. obviously mm -hmm. you know uh, Chad, you know, like the Neptunes, Neptunes in general. Yeah. Uh, Daft Punk, huge inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I would say growing up, all that that whole group as a whole was mm -hmm. probably probably like my biggest inspirations that, you know, g gave me something of, you know, see, seeing Justice and Nirvana kind of living in this like grunge electronic world. Uh, but also seeing Pharrell and Timbaland really being able to uh, exist in like the poppiest of pop worlds, mm -hmm. uh, but kind of bring some of these avant-garde sounds and all that kind of stuff with them at the same time that, mm -hmm. you know, really define their sound and really define their character as musicians. Um, I'd say, you know, the, the, those are all like my biggest inspirations mm -hmm. that people that I'm constantly going back to and constantly just uh, in awe of, you know, whenever whenever they're doing something um mm. so yeah man uh, you know yeah those uh those are those are, those are definitely my biggest right there very you know? very very interesting how do because you have a partner a denzel baptiste but you also have mm -hmm. collaborators that you work with how does that work i mean if everybody's coming with their own you know ideas or inspirations or sounds that they like or how, how does that work man how, how do you got how are you guys able to work together to make a smash hit like a like a Mo Bamba or a Panini, a little Nas X. You know, how do you guys work together to to make that magic? Yeah, I mean, you know, in, in terms of making smash hits, a lot of it is luck, you know. But uh, <laughs> you know, I think uh, 
you know, the for as long as we've been doing it and for as long as we've figured out how to work together, we've definitely figured out our system of, of how to put songs together. Um, and at first, you know, we, we, it took us a little while to figure out, you know, like uh, we didn't have a studio full of a million keyboards and outboard gear and, and all this kind of stuff. It was really just like one laptop and us just passing it back and forth. And, you know, when you got one keyboard and four hands, it's not, not the easiest <laughs> thing to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, fa fast forward, it wasn't until uh, we, we met our buddy Mel DeBarge who uh, had a studio that he was operating just uh, a couple like a couple blocks down from from NYU where my school was at. So mm. my my school was a uh, it, they they've since moved to to Brooklyn, but mm. uh, my school was located right on the north side of Houston and Mercer. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know just walk down the street a little bit more, and you're at Mercer and like Howard or Mercer and Canal, uh, and that's where our studio was right across from the V Files. Um, so you know we we met Mel and he had a studio down there and it was full of keyboards. Um, and I think once we figure out how to create with each other, where we're just able to plug in the laptop in the front of the room, but mm. all the keyboards are live and we're able to play together at the same time and all that kind of stuff. So like Denzel could be finding a bass part. I could be finding chords or vice versa. Or like one of us starts playing a lead <laughs> line, all this kind of stuff. It, it became more about, uh, creating with a more of a sense of freedom where we're really creating kind of like our own band. Mm. Um, and I think once we discovered that and unlock that and then, uh, you know, dialed into improving that, uh, is, is when we really figured out how to, how, how to coexist, you know, we're able to yeah. come up with ideas so much faster, I think, cause you know, being, being a one person in your own brain, like, you know, you can second guess everything that you do, you know, right. but having yeah. someone with you, who's like locking into what you're doing and you're locking into what they're doing. And like, you're both not in your head, like, yo, that that's dope. That's dope. That's yeah. dope. Um, you know, I, th I, th I think it's made it easier for us to to coexist in a room together and come up with ideas together and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, like I have three keyboards here, but in our main studio that we mm -hmm. work out of, uh, you know, there's a bunch more keyboards. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, when we invite other collaborators into the room and things like that, uh, if you're a guitar player, like we're going to plug you in, you know, play through your guitar, play through your bass guitar, whatever it may be. Me and Denz are going to be on the keyboards. If you're another mm -hmm. keyboard player, like, cool. We have a whole other like row of keyboards just for you to like be at your station, like come jam with us, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and that, and that's how we always bring people into the mix. If there are other producers, we, uh, the way that me and Denzel have been creating where everything is very free and, you know, we're jamming and um, just really having fun with it we we love to invite people into that process and, and be a part of that as well you know and when we're working with artists especially with Nas you know Lil Nas X it's the the same process you know there's moments where he's at the microphone and actually pretty much every time like whenever we're starting a new idea uh we'll get the initial idea down so like one of us doesn't have to play the same thing for like an hour over yeah. and over and over again you know what I mean we get the initial thing down and then Nas goes in the booth and uh you know, 30 minutes, an hour, we've had two hour long melody runs of just like us jamming where me and Denzel are just floating around on all these keyboards and whatever other collaborators we have. And Nas is just singing on the mic coming, coming up with melodies, you know? And at the very end of that, we sit, sit through that and listen back and, and pick out the strongest parts all together and uh, really craft, start crafting the record that way, mm. you know? Um, so that, you know, that, that's yeah. how we figured it out. It's definitely a process full of a lot of patience um but very very rewarding at the same time because it allows us just to to be free and really you know lock into to the musician in us you know more yeah. more so than just the producer so um that, that that's how it works you know that's yeah how it works. now very very interesting stuff man i was when i was doing my research i'm watching a lot of your, your videos on uh on genius on the genius youtube and, and it's just incredible to see how you guys uh put put these tracks together man and so thank you man what when you see Billboard number one for the Scots with with uh, with, uh, with Travis Scott or or any of the Little Nas X records that are hit number one or Little Nas X's success you know highly successful uh, pop star right now the the Grammy nominations I mean how does that make you feel knowing that you know you, you put in all the work and the hours and and the months that it's taken to to put these together yeah it's it's a crazy feeling man it's a crazy feeling you know um, it's a uh... 
you know, well, the the minute that you set your 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 eyes on a goal, you know, and then mm-hmm. when you actually hit that goal after years, you know, it just took over a decade for us to to really have our first hit, you know, um, and <clears throat> to actually see all that hard work like really paying off, especially coming from a song like Mo Bamba, where, uh, you know, that that song was loud, you know, it, it just. It yeah. just came slamming in the door, man. Yeah, but it took yeah. it took a long time. It took a mm. long time. That that song came out in June 2017, and I don't think hit the Billboard charts until February 2019 or something like that. Mm. So it took it took a really long. Like that record was just in the streets for like the longest time. We'd show up to A and R meetings, and people would be like, "Oh yeah, that." that record Mo Bamba you got, like, you know, it's, it's really doing well in the clubs, but it's, it's not streaming at all. Like, yeah. how do we make money with that? Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, and like you hear that all the time. So, mm. you know, people, people kind of like, we kind of came in the door as like our own one hit wonder in a little bit of a way. Mm-hmm. Um, so we really had to come in with that underdog mentality, you right. know, even, even coming in with the door where like you go to any party and it's like, all right, this party is like not popping. Like, Mo Bamba, <laughs> that's, that's like, all you it's need, like a man. little yeah it's a reset it's need. a reset every time yeah, man, you know yeah. so i think uh it was confusing for us man like we'd have that on one side where we're like oh my god like everyone loves this record but the label's saying it's making no money mm. you know and and that's like the most confusing thing where you're like yo all this success all this success but like it's supposed to come with this too right mm. you know what i mean so I, I think that that made us like fight a lot harder you know it made us fight a lot harder and when when uh we first when the scots first came out and got premiered in Fortnite, and it was like middle yeah. of the pandemic at the very beginning of the pandemic mm. um but to to see an experience happen in in that way where it's not in this like live setting but to see it happen in like the biggest video game in the world and uh to hop online and just see people starting to immediately react to it and then you know in the next week it debuts at number one like um it's 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 things like i've been dreaming about my whole entire life man you know Mm. it's like it's it's weird when it actually happens because you're like oh i've been i've been aiming for this moment for so long and now it's finally here and you kind of have to take a step back with that and like you know take some deep breaths with that and like you know come to terms with that new reality in like a very exciting way you know yeah um and i think especially with that record too man we we have been working with cuddy for for a a good amount of time already at that point Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, this, this was before man on the moon three. And I think mm-hmm. that record like really, uh, you know, turned things up where he was excited to work on a man on the moon three and, uh, having that record be, you know, also his first number one and to be a part of that. And, um, you know, fast forward, like, you know, we're, we're making, uh, man on the moon three and we're drinking tequila shots and mm-hmm. in his crib and, mm-hmm and celebrating the scots for the first time because we hadn't all been together in the same room for so long since that right, song since the pandemic. one in the middle yeah since the middle yeah. of the pandemic yeah and, you know to have that record and inspire us to start celebrating together and all, all things like that and all of a sudden you know we're drinking tequila shots and then that happens to be the 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 name of the record on on man of the moon three for the for the first you know first song of the album you know? yeah so it, it also continued the story where we're able to continue a story with cuddy you know where mm. Uh, we were all a part of like such a big moment uh, in music and mm-hmm. for his career and to be celebrating that. And then that celebration leads into the first song of man on the moon three. I think, uh, you know, th- 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 things like that make the number one, even more uh, surreal and mm-hmm. just uh, unforgettable, you know? Yeah. Um, and, you know, being able to do all that music with Cuddy and then on the flip side, you know, be working with Lil Nas X from from the beginning of his career with, you know, I, I remember we, we we had the first session with him ever, man. Like it mm. was like 2019 and like April 2019, we we had the first session with him ever, um, and you know, Old Town Road had like just gone number one. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he might have been like 19 at the time, uh, and you know, he's he's loving life. He's loving life. You know, it's the first time to L.A. and all this kind of stuff, and you know to to make panini in the room with him like the in his first session you know really solidified our relationship and also solidified what uh you know i think me and den saw in him very early on as someone who can really control his own narrative and uh you know be one of the few rare people that can be bigger than a song like old town road 
which is almost impossible. Mm. Uh, and to to step in the pandemic with them and kind of set up our little like COVID bubble and to come out with a record like Industry Baby and, you know, Call Me By Your Name and uh, that whole album as a whole that, you know, we, we were a part of from beginning to, you know, beginning to end and mm -hmm. uh, continue to be a part of his career in that way. Um, the number ones are just, you know, it's like the, it's, it's the biggest reward, you know, it's the, it's the biggest reward that you can get from like all, all that hard work with people that, that really deserve it, you know, yeah. that like really, really deserve it, you know, and to be, a, to be a part of like that experience, like not only for myself, but for all the people that I share it with, it's, 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 it's incredible, man. It's, it's really surreal, you know, like yeah. a, a lot of points I'm like, it, it doesn't, it doesn't feel real, you know, I'm just like literally a kid from Vermont. Man. Like, it's, <laughs> just, it's, just it's an fan from Vermont, man, you know? <laughs> You know, it's just yeah. me, me and like fish, man. It's like just jam bands up there, yeah, like Ben and Jerry's yeah. and like Burton snowboards. Right, you know? it's right. Like, those, those types of things don't really happen that much, you know. Yeah. Um, but to but to actually live it and to actually experience it, it's 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 incredible, man. It's an incredible feeling waking up and and seeing your song at the very top of the charts. Yeah. You know, uh, whether it be on Billboard or like the radio charts or uh, just logging onto social media and people are interacting with your music. You know, mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, you know, I got, I got to take a deep breath for it, man. It's, you know, it's, it's, uh, yeah. it, feel, it feels yeah. good, man. It feels good. It feels and, good. It really does. And and you mentioned social media, you know, between, and I would even consider Fortnite in that way when you're playing with multiplayer and things of that nature, but these platforms giving you another outlet to expose your music to millions and millions of people, you know, whether it's Nas X through TikTok and Instagram, whatever platforms he's on and previewing the music or the Fortnite collaboration with, uh, with Travis Scott. That's an amazing amount of exposure for you guys, man. That's incredible. I mean, I think the, the impact of those social media platforms just in terms of launching brands or exposing uh, brands to the world is just incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's played a, a huge part in our career. That's for sure. You know, I think, yeah. uh, even, even simply doing, you know, those videos that we did with genius and being able to really, uh, break down records in a way that I, you know, is, is really fun for us, but I think is also, uh, we're giving back at the same time, mm -hmm. you know, of, of a generation that's able to, to take those things in and, and, and learn from it and, and, take little components and take little pieces and figure out how they apply it to how they make music, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I, aside from our career as well, and just all the, the fruits of, you know, logging on and seeing Mo Bamba being played by, you know, some, some college, you know, band at a football game or something like that, like, mm -hmm. or, or seeing it go off in like a stadium or, you know, at a yeah. concert or anything like that, like even beyond those moments, uh, of seeing our records like perform live, I think, you know, really being able to get on platforms to to be able to speak about what we do that uh, helps inspire a new generation, man. You know, like me and Den step into rooms, man, and like there's not many people that look like us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like to to actually be able to to be in the forefront of that and you know stand out in front of it and and simply just talk about my process and what got us here in the first place, like. I think that's the most rewarding thing out of everything when mm. it comes to comes to you know logging onto social media and, and and seeing our names a part of something you know is is how it how it impacts and touches the the people that want to want to do something you know want to be something so that, yeah. that that's the coolest part about social media man yeah absolutely and, and you said that in a in a previous interview that you you wanted to change the conversation of the narrative around black producers in the pop space. Mm -hmm. What do you, what what have you seen is like some of the challenges or, um, you know, what do you th what do you think is is the issue with the conversation of the narrative as it is right now? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think the biggest thing is that there's just not there's not many of us, mm. you know, um, and that that's just the reality of it. Um, I think what me and Denzel experienced a lot when we were coming in, and you know. Uh, we, we came in at an interesting time in music. It was like right before Spotify and Apple music really was starting to make waves really before mm -hmm. they even existed. Mm -hmm. Um, and we got our deal off of making a song with this guy named Rory, uh, the song, the song cigarette song. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, in a lot of ways, probably the, the most important song of our career, you know, um, it, it's the song that got us in the door. It's the song that gave us our first deal. It's the song that allowed us to afford our first studio because of mm. that first deal and like in everything it set us on the path you know what i mean mm. but 
uh, you know, I think it was during a time when uh, radio was the most important thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you weren't making like your stereotypical radio records or things like that, it was, it was, it was hard to, to, you know, get past that. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, so for the longest time, you know, me and Den's like started in pop, but like we weren't, uh, really in the door yet. You know what I mean? And like then Spotify and Apple music became a thing. And then all of a sudden like hip hop and rap music's like the biggest thing, mm-hmm. you know? So we're like, oh, perfect. Like. Now we can actually do like what we love, mm-hmm. you know, at the end of the day. And like we we really like transitioned into that. And through that, really started discovering like once you get into that world, how people start seeing you as only someone that exists in that world. Mm. You know? And you know, even though we came from being able to produce like this like folk hip hop like record and have been working with artists that live more in like a pop space, because that's what was popular at the time. Like Spotify and Apple Music didn't exist. Hip hop was not living on the radio the same way that pop music was living on the radio so we had had this little you know experience making music in that space for pop mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden transition to hip-hop make a record like mobamba and then all of a sudden people don't believe mm-hmm. that we can make pop music right right you know? and like you know i don't know the reason i don't know the full reason yeah you know what i'm saying yeah but i think a lot of it like when you recognize when you get pigeonholed into a space like that it becomes very hard to get out of it mm-hmm. you know uh, and when we started fighting to get out of it and, you know, we, we had a couple wins, like our, our, you were signed to universal, you know, universal music publishing and like, you know, the a over there really believed in us. Um, you know, they, they had been with us since the beginning of the journey so that they, they knew the type of music that we could do, you know? Um, and, you know, they set us with, with opportunities. Like we, we did, uh, the trailer song for the first spider verse movie with Vince mm-hmm. Staples. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was like very much like a trailer song. Mm-hmm, you know, it's mm-hmm. like big taiko jumps, yeah. and like springs, <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And like, uh, you know, giving us those little little wins where we're able to like turn the corner a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we we ended up doing this record good on good in bed on Dua Lipa's album, um, and and that was also another like first example of us being able to do pop music with like a big artist. You know, mm-hmm. and I think uh, obviously it wasn't really until like we changed the narrative with with Lil Nas X, you know? And mm-hmm. it's like, hey, we're making, like, big sounding records that, sure, they like the drums, yeah, they hit, you know? But we're making pop records at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And he's performing them like a pop star, you know? And once we finally got in the door, like, recognizing, like, looking around us and seeing who else is in this space with us, like, there's just, there's not many people that, li- that look like me and Denzel in this space, you know? Um, and and we started a company called No Idol, mm-hmm. uh, where, where we've been signing producers and writers and uh, you know, try, trying to get a lot more representation in the space, you know, um, especially women, like women, there's not a lot of women in the, in the, in the production world. And, uh, you know, that, that's a big thing for us. We have uh, two producers named Sophie, Sophie Gray and Viron that, that we have underneath us and, um, you know, kids of color and, and all, all, you know, just try, just trying to bring in a little bit more representation in the room yeah. and, you know, allowing them to be a part of the things that we're a part of and, uh, just trying to get people to skip some steps, you know, because at the end of the day, like we're capable, mm-hmm. you know, it's just, it's just that this is how it's been for, for a little bit, you know, and I don't, I don't think it's at the fault of really anyone. It's just, this is how some of the rooms have yeah, come together. And it's yeah. really just about, you know, trying to get some other perspectives and some other, other, other people in there to, to help provide, you know, some good music for yeah. some great artists. Um, and, yeah, man, uh, that, that, it's like it's one of our biggest goals, man, is really yeah. just look like really like there's no better feel. There's no, you know, w- yeah, there's no feeling like looking around and being like, wow, like there's not many of us. In right. Here, right. You know? And and that's the biggest motivation, you know, like seeing that and just being like, OK, like challenge accepted. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So we, you know, we, we we keep our heads down and we just keep 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 it moving and keep 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 in the mix the best we can and just you know, trying to change the narrative every single day. That's incredible, man. And and I wish you a lot of luck with that. That's that's a beautiful thing. You know, I've seen it in, in my walks of life, whether it's in the education space, you know, corporate America, or, you know, even what I'm doing with, with this now. So, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I, I definitely commend you on that. And, and like I said, continue to, uh, to to blaze that trail and push it forward, man. So, yeah, uh, man. great Vi- job. Vice versa, man. Vice versa, man. Appreciate it. You know? Appreciate like, it. Uh, vice versa, man. You, you're, you're, you're doing all the same things. You're yep. doing all the same things, you know, so big, big salute to you, man. Appreciate, appreciate it. You. Definitely yeah, appreciate man. that, man. Um, so 
give me, you know, we did say luck, luck is a part of it, but give me or give the people, right? There may be an aspiring producer, artist, entrepreneur, whatever it is out there um, that that's looking for some inspiration or, you know, some 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 framework to go by in, in their journey. So, so give me three things that you felt like you incorporated to help you get to, to where you are now. Yeah, I think uh, doing it every day. Uh, that I mean, that's like that's the biggest thing. Consistency. You know? yeah, cons- yeah, consistency is the biggest thing, man. I mean, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, it's like uh, imagine if you miss miss three games in a row, man. Like, people <laughs> yeah. would be like, "What the heck is I going on?" I go crazy, on, you know? man. I go, <laughs> I, go, I go crazy, man. <laughs> you know, and, like, and, and you know, with that is like you you also love it. You know, yeah. like you saying that, like, yes, you, you love what you do, mm-hmm. you know? And I, I think consistency, like a loving it. And like, with that consistency is, is the biggest thing. Like once you like find that you love what you do, just do it every single day. So you continuously just get a little bit better every single day, you know, like I'm sure when you started this, like you had, you had kinks that you had to work out along the way. Yeah. And eventually like you conquer that and you move to the next and oh, another thing comes up and you conquer that and you move to the next, but it's just always about taking a little step every single day that you're able to take a step, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, like I, that that's the biggest thing. That's really the biggest thing. Like it, it really solidified how me and Denzel work together, how we communicated together. Um, and then, you know, ha- having big, big dreams and big goals in life, you know? Mm. And I think big dreams and big goals that, are beyond because once you become successful man like once you hit that little like first like oh i got my first like check the one that i've been looking for everything like that mm-hmm. that can't be the last thing mm-hmm. you know what i mean like there, there has to be that one goal that's like beyond just making money you know mm-hmm. that 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 goal that's really attached to like the love of everything like the love that gives you consistency always keeps going you know and i think yeah. i think those are like the three biggest things is like at the top having that goal that's like your pillar that you're always chasing after and you're always looking after and like mm-hmm making sure that it's like, sure. Like we, we all want to make a living. We all want to do well on that side, but it's gotta be, gotta be something else too, you know? Mm-hmm. Cause, cause once you hit it, it's confusing, man. <laughs> one, 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 once you hit that one thing, it's like, Oh my God, like what now? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So you, you gotta, you gotta make sure that there's, there's a goal in mind. That's just like, that's always going to keep you going. That's always going to keep you going. And that goal has to be just attached to the love of what you do. You know, I think, I think those are the three biggest things, you know? Love what you do, consistency, and and, and big goals. Yeah, and, keep and you it, going. And it kind of circles back to what you were saying about Julius, right? From from year mm-hmm. three to year four, getting that think, contract, and maybe I, getting a little complacent there. Yeah, man. I think I think it's I think it's happening to RJ a little bit right now. Mm. You know, I, I think I think it's it's just a natural thing, man. It, it happens with a lot of people. You know, mm. it's like not not everyone could be zion or john morant where it's like you have that one skill that just like sets you up like it breaks the game for you you know it's like john yeah. like zion comes in and can just push every everything out of his way mm-hmm. you know Ja Ja has leaping abilities and can shift in air like you know like no other you know but when i think someone like a skill set like rj barrett like he's he's really just got to be good he's got to yeah. master you know like yeah. some days he can come and score 30 and then the next day he's just inefficient man and like right i think there, there's there's more to that than just going every day and just playing basketball, you know? Like, you, you really got to conquer just what's also happening in your personal life, the changes and the shifts in your personal life mm. and being able to come to terms with it yourself, you know? And, I, you know, obviously I'm not living in his body. I'm not yeah. experiencing what he's doing every single day, but uh, who knows? It might not even be a part of it, but, mm. you know, I I think from personal experience and seeing what happened with Julius and seeing what what has happened to other players in the league and, uh, seeing what's happening currently with RJ Barrett, like he just got to get over this little hump, yeah. You know, and I I think once he does and once he settles in and becomes comfortable with uh, the life that you know he he has earned, you know that I think he's rightfully earned. You know, it's it's tough being an NBA player, man. It's mm. damn near impossible to make it to the NBA. You know, so yeah. to get there in the first place and be on a starting starting team like starting roster on on you know. In the most famous arena in all of sports, man, and all of a sudden you're the new guy with the with the big contract. Like, right. that's tough, man. That's tough, man. You know, like I, I see that. I feel for him. You know, and you know, I, I hope he's able to conquer that and uh, take things a day at a time. You know, I think I think Tibbs uh, 
people talk about accountability of how how Tibbs has been teaching RJ. I think at the same time, Tibbs has been coaching RJ in the way that uh, might make sense to him. You know, it's mm-hmm. like he he has an off game and he benches him in the fourth quarter. You know, and the next game he has what like thirty points. You know, yeah. and the next game he has an off game and he decides to not bench him in the fourth quarter because he wants him to, he wants him to play through that. Mm-hmm. You know. And like RJ ended up getting a couple little buckets. What was that? The the Clippers game or Clippers something. Game, he ended yeah. up getting like yeah. he ended up he ended up getting a, a couple little buckets. Yeah. You know, and it's like I think Tibbs holds him accountable in a in a different way. And it's like a you know I'm gonna punish you this game. You're gonna show me because I know by punishing you you might come out and score thirty because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you got a little little flame. You know. Yeah. And then the, and then the next day there might be some inconsistency, but I'm a, I'm gonna keep you in there to try to push through. You know, and and see see what you learn from this. You know, I think. Yeah, man, it's it's confusing, man. <laughs> you know, it's it's, it's that, confusing, man. You know, that, I think I think RJ is uh he's he's reached a goal that it's like the goal that you're old that it's always like in your mind like that got to get that big contract one day and then yeah. you actually hit it and it's like then what you know right and you got, right. then you got to realize like oh this is this is your job. And in order to like keep it consistent, if you want another big contract, like you got to keep it going now. Yeah. You know, you got to yeah. now all you now all you have is just to get better, you know, and that that's a different kind of motivation. You know, it's like now all you have is to like to look at yourself in the mirror and say, all right, like I made it past this point. Now, my motivation to get better is not to like prove myself to everyone else that I can get that big thing, you know, but mm-hmm. now that I got this big thing, like. Now I got to prove to myself every single day and like my family, Stay everything home. that, yeah, like I'm here, like I'm meant to be here. You know? Yeah. I, I, it's a, it's a confusing transition, man. I think what we're seeing with RJ, like could be a part of it, you know, I'm mm. not saying it's definitely a part of it, but mm-hmm. it could be a part of it. And and if it is like, I, I get it. I understand, you know, it's, it's not easy. We saw yeah. it with Julius potentially, you know, yeah, it's not easy, you know? So, yeah. Well, like, you know, we're, we're all human, man, but Man, you, you got so many takes on the Knicks. How come you never call into the show, man? Uh, I'm nervous, man. Oh, I come get on, nervous, man. man. <laughs> come on, man. You, you, you just laid out an incredible take. I think the yeah, people in the right, chat, yeah. the people in the audience would would appreciate that. Yeah, you got yeah, you yeah. to call in, man. Clip come, that one. Clip yeah, that oh, one. Oh, yeah, clip we're that clipping one. that one up, man. <laughs> we're, we're clipping that one up for sure. That that was a good quote, man. You got to call in. Call in post game. Come through on weekly. Let me know, right, man. I'll, right. I'll save you a spot, right, man. man. You're right, man. You're yeah. right. You're right. You're right. No, no that, doubt. About I mean, it. hey, that that gave me all the motivation I yeah, need. Yeah, right man. There, yeah, don't, don't worry about that nervous <laughs> stuff, man. We all here just rocking, man, as a family, man. Don't worry about it. My guy, if my yeah. guy from India is calling up, my guy Ashton from India is calling up. There's no excuse for you, man. He's coming yeah, man. in. He's he's, he's taking true, on everybody, man. man. You're true, man. Yeah. You had, you, had, you had a guy from like Australia the other day too. I oh think, yeah, we're we're heavy in Australia, man. Yeah. Australia, yeah, New man. Zealand, yeah, they're always in there, you know. Yeah, so. Man. Um, you know, it's that global reach, man. You know, take a day trip. I'm, I'm a big time uh, traveler myself. I love connecting with people from all around the world. So uh, I could definitely uh, see those parallels, man. See the world and, and, and live life to, to the fullest, man. And you're definitely killing it. You're doing a great job. And I hope we can do this again, man. Hopefully we can connect with yeah. whether it's New York or L.A. or something like that. Well, let's definitely yeah, do it and, and continue to build, bro. Yeah, man. So the feeling is likewise, man. I think uh, you know if if you end up out here in, in L.A. during during the Lakers and Laker and Clipper game, let let me know. And uh, you know, in general too, I'm I'm always making my way back to New York at, at least once a year. You know. Yeah. Um. So you know, when 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 those trips come up, I'll, I'll definitely hit you up and we'll we'll, we'll get up in New York as well. No you know, question. Hopefully, 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 it'll be during the season. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, man. And that is David Burrell, one half. Of the hit music production group, take a day trip. Diehard Knicks fan as well. David, thanks again, man. Enjoy the day. Man, CP, appreciate you, man. You know, hit those hit them thumbs up hit for your that boys. Thumbs and, up you know, button for your boys, man. You know, All shout day, out Manscaped. Day. Shout out Prize <laughs> Picks. You feel me? <laughs> that, thanks again, bro. Yeah, man. Absolutely, man. I appreciate you, man. All right, you know, cool. Keep keep doing what you do, man. Appreciate it.